Amanda, can you hear us? Um, no thumbs up. Yes, you can. Uh, I say yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we see you. Uh, Madam Chair, we're ready? Ready? It's ready to go. Ready? Yep. Okay. I'd like to welcome everybody this evening to our special meeting of April 11th, 2024. Um, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Roll we'll call, Mr. Cody. Council Member John Arnold. Here. Council Member Jamie Leonardi. Here. Council Member Demora May. Excused. Vice President of Council Amanda Pagnotta. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> Council Member Jennifer Paris. Here. President of Council Nancy Ride. Here. Council Member Jose Wilson. Okay, great. Um, as shown on the agenda, the purpose of this meeting, as you know, is to discuss the Chateau Beach Dog Park plans. And everybody um, in the neighborhood received a letter inviting them to attend if they wish. And we're here to do two things, really. One, it, well, three things. We're going to review the history of this plot of land and what has been planned by the borough over the last four or five years. And um, up to our most current plan that is just to create, at this point, a dog park. And Mr. Bode handed out the um, drawing of the most recent plan so that you, if it's hard for you to see it up here, you'll be able to really look at it on paper. Um, so, Mr. Foti is going to start by um, running through all of those things, and then afterwards we will take uh, comments from everybody that's attending that wishes to speak. And this is an official meeting of the council, so we will follow the normal um, speaking rules that everyone is entitled to three minutes, and you will have to come up and say your name and address, and then... Um, you know, tell us what, what you're thinking. So we'll start with Mr. Foti's review now. Thank you. In front of you on the screen, shared at home, is the project sheet we're calling uh, Chateau Beach Bid. This was, as the project was first conceived back in 2019 and 2020, as part of the grant package in order to create a kayak park for Oakmont Borough. When the plans were eventually put out for bid in 2022, 2023, these are the plans that were provided. The highlights of the plans were the, uh, the off street parking in this row here, a primary road that would take you down closer to the river, a turnaround provided, a slide in order to drop the kayak into the river, and then the resident would bring their or visitor would bring their car back up to the up parking area. Accessible parking was provided down here. This was considered to be phase one of a two-phase project. The second phase of the project was a proposed ADA accessible walkway and switch back to another landing area for kayaks, as well as a compost style restroom facility, as well as a covered pavilion. That was the plan that came, that was essentially generated and, and approved for, for bid documents. When released, we had a total of three bidders in the borough. The lowest bid came in at $517,000 to do this project of phase one. The grant award for Chateau Beach was $200,000 from the state. So the borough was going to be on the uh, obligation for the additional $300,000 to make the project come to fruition. Um, at that time, and in the peak of what we we're just coming out of COVID, council deferred any action and rejected the bid just due to the cost. And the phase one cost essentially predominant work was just the earth disturbances and the work to get it what you see now. Correct. There we go. But before that, originally 
back in whatever time it was a park or a, a beach. That's how it got its name, right? From historical, my understanding from historical perspectives, it was uh, a training center for during the Civil War. Oh, I believe. Okay. Yeah, um, right. Mr. Rogers will correct me if I'm incorrect about that. Um, that's where the name came from and originated. Uh, it was land that was owned by the industrial center that was there, uh, currently owned by Brentag Northeast. In some way, shape, or manner, the borough acquired this vacant piece of land from Brentag. And it we recorded, took ownership at some time of 2020, 2022, and consolidated into one large lot that you see here. I believe that the land originally, and somebody may know who lived here then, was a paint company. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Bob Saker. Thank you. So after Borough Council at that time rejected the bids for the project, still considering the highest and best use for the property, especially with the $300,000 override oversight, um, look at the different options for the project. And the one that, that stuck was a conceptual dog park. And for this one, I will zoom in um, based on the fact that in the region, there are, not many, there are not many dog parks, but there were other boat landings in the area and thought maybe it was a duplication of services. So in the concept of, we call concept one of a dog park, which made a holding exclusively a dog park, the amount of parking was reduced to just this number of spaces with one accessible space, a walkway to a joint fence area, which became a 3,200 square foot area for small dogs and an area of just under 15,000 feet square feet for large dogs. What the intent of this drawing was to do was to not uh, denude this entire section of the property, which is heavily vegetated, shrag bush, some dis, you know, deciduous trees may be less than desirable for landscaping, but definitely had wooded area, but it preserved and kept that area as, as undisturbed as much. This area laying flat was mostly already the maintained area that's low grasses and other sort of things. And the intent also was to try to keep as many trees as possible. Um, this started the conversation rolling. Fast forward a couple of months when we started talking about, and this, and I'll explain this, the next three slides you've seen, I'll generate in the last two, two and a half to three months. So Chateau Beach bid sat around for three, that drawing was about three or four years old. The next, this sheet and two others have been generated in the last 60 days. Just, just to give a perspective of time frames. Okay. Um, obviously, council had a, a couple of public meetings and this is on the agenda and the issue was raised about this specific design of this park and some of the lack of clarity and some of the information we needed and we grasped from, from resident input that attended those meetings. So borough, as well as uh, some of them were still passionate about the idea of concept of this totally segregates the park away from the river and there's no hopes of ever going to having a kayak park and forces the borough to continue its discussions with the Greek Orthodox Church at California Avenue about still providing some type of access there and making it the primary discussion point. Council then directed uh, through the borough engineer to come up with a second concept plan, which is concept plan number two. <coughs> Concept number two did two things in mind. First of all, it maintained the dog park, albeit a smaller footprint of an area, and but it designed it in such effect that the cul-de-sac for a future growth of a kayak park could still be provided. No grading or design of this area has been entailed, but again, it shows that this plan has a concept that we can still put in the cul-de-sac in a future date just by the way the roads are aligned. Again, in this instance, the dog park's areas were greatly reduced to a 12,000 square foot dog area for large dogs and just still around 3290 for small dog areas. Again, the joint fencing. Just point of reference from a maintenance standpoint, these double gates represented here for the ability for the borough to come in and do lawn maintenance inside the project, bringing in our lawn drive mowers, or any of our larger trucks if necessary. Still had paved roadway, still had stormwater management. Um, but again, the, the, the impact of parking was even reduced further from this plan. Not bad. Council said, can you keep going? So they asked directed Lennis and Sawyer to take a concept of emphasis on adjacent property buffering. 
still keeping the conceptual idea of, of could we grow into a future kayak park access point? And do we have a dog park area that still looks like it would be a usable space in the borough and an attractive space in the borough for those individuals who have dogs? What you're holding in your hand this evening, if you're present, and what I'm going to show you now is what's called concept plan number three. Concept plan number three, and I will zoom in, forces all the parking at the immediate entrance of the project. Does we still have on-street, and this whole entire conversation, we still have on-street parking if we necessarily need it, but it's there. This design forces the pedestrian walkway along the northern property line. We have a joint meeting again where dogs, small dogs go to the right, large dogs go to the left. We've increased the small dog area to 7,000 square feet in this design. And the large dog area got 15,000 square feet in design. And I want to focus more along the property line, along the residents who live on. Thank you. Sir, is this still a lot of square feet? Getting that point. <clears throat> So in this design, we pulled the work 10 feet off of the property line, which is the solid broke this deeper set line that's here. In between this fence where the hand is rested and the property line is a 10 foot landscaping buffer. Inside that landscaping buffer, the, the plant proposes conifer trees, evergreen trees to be planted and maintained by the borough. Additionally, the fence line from this point in the corner of the borough property, all the way to the front near parking would be an eight foot high solid fence. We are pricing about putting soundproofing on the eight foot high solid fence on the inside side of the fence, just for additional added um, noise reduction and buffering. But unlike the other two conceptual plans, this one adds a 10 foot buffer with landscaping that the borough can maintain and would maintain that provides some sort of gap, at least a temporal gap between the two. As John just indicated, this design still allows for the potential for future funding and grant opportunities to continue to bring a kayak park access point over to the side of the park. All we, all we would have to do, all we have to do is with this alignment that's right here, with this alignment, is just take it and move it to again to the north side of the property line. We can redesign sidewalk, but for the most part, all we're doing is relocating fence. We've kept this design to follow the, the, the terrain, but that's also the terrain of the road. If you recall from this concept, let me get these back in this side so we can see them. That size. That size, that size. If you just scheme through the tabs, you can see this is a dog park without a kayak park entrance. This is a dog park with the kayak park concept, the kayak park concept still kept in place, but you'll note that there's no buffering or no, no um, protection along the side of the property line. This concept plan still has the area maintained. I want you to focus over here, still has the area that we can access with a kayak park access way. Maintains or provides a buffer this time and still provides a large area for the dogs and the ability that it does not cut off this half of the problem. <laughs> that is what we're currently looking at. This drawing is less than a week old. This conceptual plan you see right here is a pro opinion probable cost of around two hundred fifty-six thousand dollars. Two five six, two hundred fifty-six. Uh, sorry, the full price. The, rule, the rules you're going to have to be one at a time, name, address, and where you live. When we get to that part, I just didn't understand the, the phase one pricing on the initial <clears throat> kayak process. So that is correct. Phase one included these improvements here, the roadway, and this, I call it a sluice box, but essentially it was a slider to get the gable to get the kayak down to the river. The ADA switchback ramp, 
the pavilion and restroom, which I'll zoom in on for those interested in seeing it. This pavilion and composting restroom and this were all part of phase two. So that is not included in the 517. So that was an additional yeah. funds. Yeah. The entire project at the time back in 2017, 2018, 2019 was that the whole park itself was not going to take more than $500,000 to develop. Um, <laughs> the number came in was quite a surprise for the earthwork. Yes. Right. Okay. okay. And um, from our other meetings and um, some of the people that attended those, so they raised some concerns that the neighbors had, and um, the primary one was the privacy, and the, or prim two primary ones, privacy and sound. And so that was what our engineer uh, looked at and we talked about was adding the plant material, which will absorb sound and also give you more privacy, and then a solid fence. Right now, there's a chain link fence on that between the property and the homes. So there will be a solid fence to give privacy and sound a sound barrier both. And then if it turns out there's more problems with sound, if it, you know, we don't know how loud or quiet it will be. Um, we are also looking into a, um, you know what it's called? I don't know the term I'm going tell me. It's essentially, it's a membrane. Looks like a tarp that you put on the inside of a fence, it's solid. And it it just deadens the sound. They're mostly found in urbanized areas with dog parks. We've discovered this through their website. So I think that probably would be if we need it. If it turns out we don't need it, it we would spend the extra funds. So it's yes, right. Okay. So those are the things, the, the major things that we took from the community's input about the dog park um, idea and included them in these drawings so and two more points of reference and this is concept number three again we are adding a yard hydrant into the property so we're bringing water to the side of the park secondly this eight foot high fence there's gonna be a section of eight, eight foot high fence here in front of the park installs so that when people do head in parking with lights they're going to be parking against an eight foot high wall and i am vaguely familiar i think along the, the main property line here is already six foot high Fence of varying degrees of yeah, structural stability. Degree. So we're definitely going to provide a barrier of eight foot high here for the headlights into the back windows of, of homes and stuff like that. And like our other parks, um, it will be some version of dawn to dusk, some some version of that. It will definitely close at dusk. And the morning hour um, is kind of something to talk about. You know, in the middle of the summer, dawn might be too early. Um, so there may be a, you know, physical hour, seven o'clock or some number like that, um, so that nobody's coming. What I still yeah. consider the nighttime, personally. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, so that'll be that'll also be considered. But um, but it it will close before dark, and the just like our other parks, the police would lock the gates every what? night. When I, lock them every morning. when I reviewed this with Nancy, when we got the drawings, I have said out loud that there's a, we have the ability, we can buy a separate gate, swing gate, and just close off the width of the roadway. And then police can open and close at night. A very common practice in many communities that have parks or you just really can't close off the parking lot. So that's, that's, that's like a $5,000 add on to a project. And I, and I think maybe the last thing was, um, this plan, if if someday a council decides it's worth it and has been find the money and wants to continue to make the um, kayak park, by doing it this way, there's no um, infrastructure that has to be removed. It's only fencing that has to be removed. So we're not spending a lot of money doing something that would be then ripped up if that <laughs> additional plan were ever um, developed. So we tried to... Sean really, the, our engineer, you know, worked to make, tried to make that all work together. And so we would not be spending extra money if um, if we eventually do make that change. Do you have anything else? I have nothing else. Okay, before we turn to, do the, anybody on council want to add any, their two cents before we go to public comments? <laughs> no, no. for me, thank you. No, okay. 
All right, so so public comments. And as I said, we have to follow our normal rules because this is a formal meeting for us. Um, so everybody uh, can come forward, three minutes of speaking, and um, we're, it will not, we're not gonna do a lot of dialogue. We're gonna let everybody talk. And then at the end of the questions and comments, if, if there's something we can comment back, we will. Um, but we want to hear. We want to make sure we hear from everybody, and don't get kind of bogged down into one conversation. So, so Bertha's going to begin. Name and address. But legally, has that been measured? Besides, Bertha, you have to say your name and address. Ah, Bertha. Name and address. Oh, Bertha Shear, thirty-nine Moore Street. That's good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, legally, is that pitch appropriate to be in survey? And is it doesn't it seem like it's big enough to me. The property was surveyed uh, when before the borough took ownership of it. Um, again, before my time here, but the property was surveyed. It was used as the doc. This document of the property was utilized for the closing between Brentag Northeast and the borough to take ownership of it. It's. I've seen nothing that says this drawing is not consistent with this. Thing this. Who's funding what? This project? It's okay. We should have we should have said that. Yeah. I never really mentioned it's a grant. It's a grant. We have a two hundred thousand dollar grant from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We are required to provide a about a ten to fifty. Now that, this question might seem far off, but after watching TV last couple of days, hello. Who's going to be responsible? If these dogs lose their feces, nobody cleans them. Is the Board of Health or anybody supposed to be notified on this? The borough. The borough, the borough will, it's our park, just like any other park. It's up to us to keep it clean. Well, okay. Dog owners are, te are technically responsible for their dogs no matter what, no matter where, no matter when. Will some people take all the bags from the park and use them for their personal use? Maybe. But a resident who's anybody's using a dog park, we will have the facilities there to collect dog waste, be a bag with a drop container. Very typical. I'm certainly opposed to this. If Alfie's yeah. ever been there, they could have sold that piece of property many years ago. And uh, now you gave it away, and the firm is always looking to make money. So this doesn't make common sense to me. That's all. Property you ceded to the property. You didn't pay. Okay. Um, huh? the, one, the next person you want to speak? You need a permit for that? Nah. My name's Carrie Mostel, 43 yeah. North Street. Yeah, that's good. My only concern is because uh, we are one of the neighbors there, right up against the fence and everything. The existing fence that is there now, we have a chain link which was the original and there are many years. Some sections of it, uh, there's trees growing through it. Mm -hmm. I have a couple on my property like that. The trees are existing and they're damaged you yeah. know, in some way. So is that, and then also we have the wooden fence, which is fine. Right. Now, are these two fences gonna be removed or, and then a fence put up at that point with the property? Yeah, it's, it's well, no. we would leave everything along the park line as is. If we have to repair something, we can. Wait, I mean, if it's art, it's well, it depends on who owns the fence along the property. Oh, as okay. far as I know, it's uh, that is supposed to be the borough's problem. Okay, well, that would be okay. But there will be a six foot high fence on the property line, 10 feet away from the property is going to be the eight foot high, tall high fence. All right, so, so there'll, there'll be eight, there'll be a gap. Gonna leave the chain link, put the bumper, you know, the planting there, and then put the eight correct foot fence. That's the, the drawings for tell, yes. <laughs> Gary Marcel, see you right back. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. M-O-S-P-E-L. Thank you, Gary. Um, the next person? Hi, I'm Dermot Towers, 411 Fence Street, also Redford. Uh, just curious to see the water going in. Uh, do we have sewage or anything or bathrooms or anything like that? No, no restrooms were proposed. Okay. 
Would there be have to be? There would have to be eventually, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Provenza, 24 Lawrence Street. Um, this is a clarification on that property. Originally it was a Civil War camp for like six or nine months. That was Camp Breaker. Sometime it became Shinto Beach, which became use of kayak uh, canoes back then. People swam there. There's pictures all along the river. Club all the way up to that area of a lot of camps. That's all the area got the name the camps. People lived there. But for the summer we come there. But Chetto Beach and specifically my understanding there was little hats all around it. The center commune that people would come and cook at and things like that. And that was aired up until the fifties. Like you know no uh, was it the hill steep? Was this? It was. It was, was, it, it, was it was still flat like it was, but yeah, the hillside going down. But there actually was for the Chateau Beach. I've seen pictures of canoes on the river, the dock going out, and then there's like a food stand or something. You could come and yeah, your mom rent. had those pictures. Yeah, and they would they actually them. rent them. Yeah, I have some. But that hill must have still been. Be I wonder how they got down that hill. Yeah, I'm not sure if there. There must have been steps. Somewhere, be but I think when they took WPA with that wall, then yeah, I think that's when that all that stuff was limited. I've been down there years ago looking, everything's just you know gone from that beach, you know, any of those buildings, right? We went down too, we and, and it's so overgrown, it's hard to even imagine it's, a beach at one time, right? <clears throat> yeah, the only uh, consideration I'd like, I mean, I think here, I know it's the cost is one of the big things for the uh kayak park. And I think if you if you're not gonna do it now, it's never gonna happen. It's, nothing's gonna get cheaper. You know, I mean we we like dogs and stuff like that too, but I think you know, maybe doing both of them together would be a good idea. But to, to totally abandon the kayak park is I just wish you would, you know, you know give that more consideration. So a lot of people put a lot of work into that years past. So I'd like you to give that some you know, consideration and then I appreciate you know everybody looking this over, but a lot of this stuff we were never notified. I never received a letter even just for this. But you know, somebody said they signed a petition. I could see most of the people here are born trailer of a kayak park. I mean, all these people that signed this petition that want this dog park. Where are they? Yeah. I actually I actually have a fish I printed them off. Okay, we got one part. Oh, there's Michael Martin. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what you do. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, man. James Joyce, 544 Penn Street. Uh, I'm not sure really where to begin. Just real quick, um, there, there was feasibility studies dating back to 2016. Friends of the Riverfront was in. We had the ad hoc committees. We had the board at the time, the uh, council at the time was working on it. It was always considered to be a, uh, a kayak park. It was called the kayak park. So a long time we decided to change the name to Chateau Beach. Very, very late in the game, a uh, rec board member said, well, maybe we could stick a kayak, uh, a dog park there on that rounded hills, hilltop where they show that large dog park. So that's some of the history. But basically, um, I tried to meet with the uh, borough engineer, and I hope he did these drawings, but he seemed to ignore most of the things I told him. But um, I also showed him the 517,000 itemized bid, and what drove it to 517,000 was paving the road and putting in this large 10 foot wide by two and a half foot high uh, mound along the, the people's property that shield the neighbors from a little bit of the neighbors. Large, enormous mound. It was a $100,000 soil mound. Didn't need to be there. Uh, it's 600 feet long, 10 feet wide. And there already is a, a seven foot high wooden fence all the way along the first four or five properties. It's only when you get down yeah, down there. Not yet. Yeah. Please let us speak. Not yet. I measured it. Yeah. Um, so it ends, it ends by the Turks property, but and I could see the last property, I think it's Shriver's, I could see having a mound maybe uh, uh, there, because they're the only neighbors that actually would be able to see what's going on in the kayak park yeah. getting them. But anyhow, um, by, pay, by paving that, you drove it into having stormwater management. As soon as you had stormwater management in that mound, you had EMS control. So without the paving of parking spots and road, that whole kayak park would only cost $147,000.
you would have been under your grant. As soon as you paid it, you drove yourself into all kinds of civil engineering improvements that didn't need to be made. Kayak people could drive down a gravel road, turn around, put their kayak down on the ramp, park up wherever you wanted to park in a gravel parking lot. They don't need paving and curbs, stormwater management. You have to have, after you have curbs, now you have to have culvert pipes. If you have a place to put the culvert pipes, that's the discharge. Now you need ENS controls. 147,000 we could have done that part for. And now it's 517. Uh, in your 147 estimate, would your kayak park plan be ADA accessible? No, it would it would have that ramp that was shown in the in the first picture, alternative one ramp. And that would take an able-bodied person to walk down the ramp and walk their kayak back up. That would only be phase one, yes. So you want 40 set? Well, it's only phase one, right? That's what the drawing was called. The dog park phase, phase one, I also gave them uh, a, a dog park phase one, alternate one, that could fit the iron park as drawn on phase one. Of the by moving the dog small dog park to the north end, by moving the large dog park to the north end where Brenta gave us extra property, they give us, there's 10,000 square feet of property over there, you can have a large dog park, um, and not put it behind the Turk's house and along the neighbors. Both dog parks could be on the northern edge of the property along Brentag's fence. And you'd still get in about the same size dog parks. What might might be linking them together through fencing, you'd have to go in one or go in the other. But they'd be somewhat separated. Would it be possible for you to provide a sketch or something of this plan? They're right here. I gave them to the uh, borough, borough engineer, uh, Sean Wingrove. And uh, could, could he, he was going to take him out. He came back with this. Good. You don't have Sean. Sean has one. I made copies. Okay. I gave an extra copy, maybe even this guy. I forget. I had three copies. But just, just to, you just, you know, want to keep comments. Here. But it's item three. I'm almost out of time, anyhow. Uh, the alternate three looks very disappointing. That would cease the use of ever using the property as a kayak park. Right oh. where the, the last one. No, no, item three preserves the possibility of a kayak. That was two, I thought. No, Looks like you could have ramped up. Leave it to a three. The final plan preserves the capability. You'd have to extend the road through the small dog park area. There's some shrinkage, but not as dramatic. There's some. Yeah, and the, the, the whole parking at the very top for, for the kayaks. That far away. That's that's twelve hundred feet away from the river. There's, no one's going to go for that unless you can drive down and turn around and come back up. No one's going to move you the car twelve hundred feet. Wait, wait, wait. That's not dialogue. Right. We, have, we can't dialogue. We'll, we'll never get this. We can comment at the end. Okay. So I I think there could be improvements made. They doubled the size of the small dark park, and that's what really gave a lot of trouble to access the kayak area. If they hadn't doubled the size and they slid it against the northern property line. The road could just go right through it, like I think it was alternative two, where you showed a road going all the way down the river in a turnaround. So that there's a lot of improvements that still could be made. I'd be happy, more than happy, to meet with with look over drawings with people in the council or with uh, the borough engineer again. But I I really am pretty disappointed with the design they came up with. Thank you very much. Yeah. Next question, Bob. Yeah. 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 Donald, oh. <laughs> sorry, Donald Detroit, 53 Morris Street, and my husband is no longer living in Spencer. His name is on there. There are some words that I listened very carefully for, and I didn't hear them. One was odor. One was traffic. The people in our area have been assaulted in the past couple of years with traffic. We take our lives in our hands when we try to go anywhere. Example, today I went to get a haircut. I could only go a certain way. The traffic coming over the bridge was horrendous. I didn't dare try to pull out. And this is only going to add to it. And I object to that. We have added a uh, multitude of uh, tractor trailers. 
chemical uh, chemical uh, carriers. And again, the people there are afraid. I'll, uh, I didn't talk to the rest of them, but I imagine that they're as afraid as I am to really go in. I don't go anywhere before 10 o'clock in the morning or after three o'clock in the afternoon. And sometimes you can't even get anywhere then. You know, who's policing this? I mean, we just, the owner for one, who's gonna police that? I wouldn't want the job. That's like quite enough. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin O'Toole, 509 Holden. Uh, Kevin O'Toole on 509 Holden. Uh, first, I want to say I understand that there's a lot of compromise with pricing in all of that, uh, you know, whenever you bid on a project, you're hoping to have the kayak launch and the phase one comes in 500,000. It's obviously a disappointing factor. Um, as far as dog parks, I actually did some research. There's a lot of parks in the neighboring areas as far as accessibility, as far as kayak launches. Uh, the only one I can think of that's uh, available is the, I think it's the Verona over in Verona and the accessibility from Verona to uh, Oakmont at times is even like a pedestrian is kind of pain. Uh, as far as the phase one project with the full kayak launch, I actually really like that design as far as something to provide to the community. Uh, there was parking to bring people in. Obviously, we as you know, as a borough and as a town, we want to bring people into our businesses to come visit to spend their money here. Um, I'm curious if there was any efforts to try and get any additional funding from either private or from uh, donations from the community or things like that, or businesses to try and raise funds to try and reach our goal of 500,000. Are you saying you're liking the kayak park? The base one. The five. Very pro kayak park. As far as uh, the dog park, not against dogs, but there's a lot of, most people don't have yards and as far as things for the people of Oakmont. I think that the kayak park brings a lot more to, again, the people who are paying taxes here, which is what I would like to ceremony. At the end, we'll talk a little bit more. We can talk a little about the funding. Yeah, I'm very, very whatever. So we'll just keep that as, as a topic. Hello. Hello. I'm Karen Shriver. I live at 33 Potomac Street in Oakmont. I'd like to share the perspective of some of the residents who live on the streets near the Potomac at what was the Shaco Beach Park, Kayak Park, or the Dog Park. Um, several issues concern us. First of all, safety, security, and signage. And second, privacy, parking, and pollution. Can you talk about safety and security for a second? We worry about people accessing the kayak park through our properties. At 33 Potomac Street, my residence, which the previous council called Ground Zero for the kayak park, we've had trouble with teenagers using the riverfront as a drinking and drugging hangout. We've had teens arrested on our river frontage in front of my house. We've had canoes stolen. After a few years, a few years ago, after having been robbed in my home, I was told by Oakmont police that it would take longer for them to get down to our area and was asked why I didn't have security cameras. If the kayak park goes through as proposed, we will be forced to buy security cameras, whether we can afford them or not. As important, the people who live along this section of the river are for the most part 65 or older, and they don't have the physical ability to confront someone who might be interested in home invasion, theft, vandalism, or property damage. This places unfair stress on seniors. It's naive to think that those who use the kayak park will necessarily obey the law. The remoteness of the location makes it highly likely 
that it will attract both nice people and troublemakers. Residents should not have to worry about lawsuits from parking from the park patrons who come to their property, use their dogs, cut through their property, use their dogs, get injured, and then try to sue the owner. This raises two important questions. What is the budget for security? And second, will police officers be assigned to ensure the safety of residents? If the police merely open and lock the park, the chances for bad things to happen to residents and or their property increase. At the same time, the property values may decrease. A, a word about signage. We are concerned that the budget for the borough that borough is considering does not include funding for sign signage. And maybe it does, but we haven't seen that budget. In previous discussions with the borough in 2017 and 2019, the residents were guaranteed by Kerry Del Rosso that excellent signage would be a priority. We need at least four signs, one at the corner of Holton and Allegheny that directs people kayak park this way or dog park this way, one at the corner of 3rd and Potomac kayak park this way or dog park so that they're for pulling the traffic out of the residential area. Third, a sign at the entrance announcing opening and closing times and rules such as no motorized canoes or no dogs that are fighting, whatever rules that you want to decide, they should be explicit. And we also need a sign at the end of the park, near the beach, if there is a Chateau Beach Park, that says Chateau Beach, beach Park ends here, no trespassing beyond this point to signal the beginning of the residential section. And my last comments are about privacy, parking, and pollution. The residents of the area have already been subjected to, to environmental and noise pollution with the expansion of the Brentide facility, the opening of Speedway, the karate business, Spin City Oakmont, Kelsey's Dance Studio, the Mighty Oak Barrel, and of course the bakery with people parking on 3rd Street to avoid the bottleneck in front of the bakery. Even a quick walk behind Speedway or around Mike's Wife's Bar will show how polluted this litter, how polluted the area is becoming with litter. And with more people, there will be more litter. Brentag's tractor trailers have already made Allegheny Avenue and Holton a dangerous intersection. The narrow streets are not made for current traffic and cannot withstand more. We are worried that people will park on the side streets and may block our driveways. There's already very little parking available between 3 and 6 p.m. on 3rd Street because of all the little karate boys and girls and dancers, which is fine. It's just I'm just saying that traffic is already there. We don't need more. <laughs> Residents of the area should not have to endure more noise pollution from additional vehicles and slamming of car doors. Increased vehicles will also add to existing air pollution. We are asking council to consider our concern as an issue of environmental justice. Previous plans for the kayak park included an outside toilet 10 feet from my house. If built, the toilet may create an offensive smell. The smells will also come from the proposed dog park. And this has already been raised by residents in previous meetings. In both cases, the smells may decrease property values. We think the plan is unfair to us. For these reasons, safety, security, signage, privacy, parking, and pollution, we respectfully ask the Oakmont Borough Council to choose another location for both the kayak and the dark park. Thank you for your kind of consideration. Thank you. Heather Malkey, 756 Allegheny River Boulevard. Um, I am in favor of development of that lot. Um, I do have a small senior dog. I live a couple of blocks away. I would be walking to utilize the dog park. Um, I'm not opposed to a kayak launch, so if there was a way to do both. I think that would be um, a good thing. Um, was happy to see the new drawings with the eight foot 
privacy fence and um, the buffer with the landscaping, which I think, you know, the lot as it sits today is kind of an eyesore, it's vacant. So development of that lot, I think would increase property values and be a nice addition to um, the community. So I'm there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is anyone else? I'm going to walk over to this. You, I can't pick up on the microphone if you don't. Uh, Sorry, uh, I can't hear you. I, I promise you, you'll hear me. Melanie Moscow, 43 Moore Street. I have some questions as far as where that first tree is. Like, I just needed to get Hang on. a little expanded. You want the most recent concept plan? Yes. Let me <laughs> zoom in. So, there we go. Let me see. One, um, it looks like the trees start right at our house. So, yeah. Um, so you're going to go pull in like however many feet with cars and what face into where we live. That's how the plan is. Both directions. Both sides, north and south. But we won't see headlights because there's going to be the eight foot fence. There's going to be an eight foot high fence. My, my main right there. big thing is right now we don't need three fences. We have that chain link fence, we have that wooden fence they put in because they said that's all the higher the borough would let them do when the lights back in 2016 and we were here with the kayaks in the beginning and the lights, um, which did absolutely nothing because some of you have been down there and seen the lights and they're horrible. We've had to, you know, block two windows literally in our bedroom, which are no longer there, and buy <laughs> the curtains to pull over our living room French door because you can't see out of the look or see TV without the lights. The problem is, and the reason I wouldn't care normally, but there are trees that have grown between that chain link fence and that wooden fence. And I mean, the one is like this big that Brent had cut off at like maybe seven foot or something. And it has vines and leaves that literally have gone in both directions over the chain link, over the wooden. They're going up into the live trees that aren't good for the trees. I mean, these are like those vines that wrap around and like can kill like other trees. But the problem with all these, well, a few trees in between these two is if you want to leave the fences there, then I just want something in writing from the borough that those trees are not our responsibility because they need taken away. Even before you put up something else, there are <laughs> at least two that have to have something done with you know, that are really bad. And plus the broken ones that are <coughs> back there that have been done. I didn't know about that. I mean, that's the that cosmetic stuff. We've not looked yeah. at the existing. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, we definitely don't need three fences. But if you're leaving something, you have to either one or another take at least one down to get some of the junk that's in the middle mm -hmm. away. Um, the other thing is, and there's tons of things I just don't feel three minutes is enough to do it. But for my own thing, when I was here at the last meeting, which wasn't a, a council meeting, it was a workshop meeting. Um, I was upset because just getting beat down for the last couple of months and how quick all this has happened and we had to find out by the paper. But I wasn't happy with how I responded and how I left. So for that, I do apologize. That is not normally how I am. But then I also felt like, wow, a couple of days later, we actually got a meeting. So like, it was that little bit of a bittersweet, like, I don't like acting like that. But then again, we are never notified, never anything. I mean, Matt lives on Morris. He never even got a letter about tonight. It was by another neighbor. So, you know, I just feel that, like I said, I do go back to Isaiah's statement about transparency. That's what I think we all want. We want to be a part of it. I think, you know, again, and 
but it was going to be the kayak thing. Karen and another member were going to be on a committee. So, like, if you're going forward with something, and basically there's nothing we can do about it, I still want that Karen and Matt or Karen and someone to be on a committee to, like, work together with this as best as we can. You know, I know there's tons of other things, but for right now, three fences, because something's got to go with at least one of them to get out some of the junk and um, work with us. You know, let's work together to try to do whatever we can. Something's going to happen. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Is anybody else want to speak? Notice from the map that there is a very narrow piece of ground that comes down along my property and it fans out and gets where it's at the corner street. And I've been trying to buy that for the last 35 years. I thought some, we took care of that. I'm sorry? I thought we handled that, that piece that you wanted. We did. Oh. We did. Yes, we did. 2020 or 2022, we did a resolution. Yes. Did everything with the county. I, well, I know we did. You were my first land so. The county is screwing it up then because I just got a notice. Well, I don't want to go into all that. All right, but we, Donna, we took care of that. Okay, Scott I took care of that. To the it. county level, even though I have paid for two appraisals on that property, they still are saying they're going to appraise it. They want it to be more than it is. It's a no nothing piece of property. No, we did the resolution to follow through well, with that, and that's on the county's end. I got to the county. Yeah. Then, now they're saying they want me uh -oh. to get a realtors to appraise. Them. Oh well. And I told them I was done. We'll pull the file. Yeah. And we'll probably have to get this. We'll probably have to get Kate involved. Yeah. Oh, that would that's be very helpful. Yeah. This is the first we're hearing that. Yeah. We thought when he uh, stopped did that resolution, it was all done. Yeah. I know exactly that little fan piece. Yeah, it's it's actually owned by the, it's owned by all three. It's right here. Yeah, yeah and we yes. got the school district to all do it. All three of us, yeah. And the borough did it. And, yeah. uh, and then the county was the last piece. Yeah. This is our first time here, Donna. Yeah, so that's... The only thing I don't like down there, I'll be honest with you, I don't like all the bamboo that was planted somewhere at some time. Yeah. That upsets me. Someday I'll tell you. Okay. okay. <laughs> that bamboo upsets me. So, yeah. if anybody's ever walked down there to see all the bamboo, somebody put it there. It's right it's it's all Yeah. Right. Okay. And it is an unattractive piece of property that we need to make attractive. So, somehow we've got to come up with some resolution that of give and take because we can't leave it the way it is. It's horrible. Well, I was all ready to go and I. In fact, I had a gentleman clear it, helping me to clear it. Uh -huh. That bamboo is tough. Oh, I know. So I, I hate was, it. If you recall, that was our last project. Part of the, the agreement was we would do one last cut and we cut everything down. And that's when Mr. Huber got in. Oh. Um, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, while we have Donna here, could we ask her a question about the property? Yeah. Could you pull the, uh, the drawing down so we could see her garage? I don't yeah, think that's it's, it's, right. it's, it's right there. Fan shape. It's a fan shape behind the shed. Yeah, this, this is the flag part of the lot she's talking about right yeah, here. Yeah, it's real strange. So this is a 20 foot alley for. Is that, is that alley? That's, not, that's not an alley. It's I know. But it looks like a demo alley. It's like what's the answer? Jamie. Jamie. It's not. It's not. We've already been through all this. We're not going to. I just want to know if we have who owns Okay. And that's. We can figure that out. Yeah. But not now. I have one. Okay. And then. Okay. Right. So let's, let's go back to a couple, of, a couple questions that were asked that we didn't answer. We just kept moving along. One had to do with the funding. And had we looked for additional funding? Um, we have not. We have a grant of $200,000 from the Commonwealth Financing Authority, CFA. I don't remember specifically what grant through the DCD it's given to us. It might be Greenway Trails. There, there are several subcategories of grant funding titles. I don't have it memorized. 
No, we have not looked for additional funding after we saw the first phase bid. Um, it was just a decision of council at the time. Yeah, and it was put on hold and then the dog park idea came up sort of following that. And um, there was also a question by the people on council um, in the last session of council when we moved this to a dog park activity was for the cost, even if it was less, in this case, say it would be an additional 300,000 from that 200 that we now have, um, that the cost for the kayak part seemed excessive for the amount of use and the inaccessibility of getting down to where you launch your, your boat. Um, and so we looked at other places in the community and there are some ideas for other places to put kayak launches that would be much more easily reached and would cost us much less. And at that point, the council at that time said, we're just going to look at it for now as, as a kayak park, as a dog park. Um, then when we announced it, I know Jamie and some other people who are very interested in a kayak park came and, and um, got involved in the discussion again. And it's now a different people to some extent on this council um, to be talking about it. And so it's valuable to hear everybody's comments. Um, but at the time, the council just said it was too much money and we're gonna go for grants and we do go for grants all through the community, but we thought other places we were better served getting the money for other purposes. And that was that decision about four years ago. John. You take objections, but you said I don't believe we ever went into the book any detail on cost estimates for all of the kind of sites. No, no, not really for, for other no, because this one when this was done, this is what they came back with that we would have to do to in order to make it ADA accessible and so we stopped. We did not look at anything else. We looked at alternate, alternate sites. And yes. We looked at cost. We did not look at cost. And they would, oh, okay. they would potentially be the ADA compatible site for Chicago. That could be, yes. I mean, okay. Okay. Um, I just wanted to point out that we're only going to be open in the daytime. There will be no lights issues. I mean, there won't be car lights. There won't be headlights coming into your properties in the middle of the night. This isn't going to be a Brent Tag kind of idea of, of too many lights. Um, but I do think that we should, the question of the, of the back fences, mm -hmm. what we end up doing there should be appealing, attractive, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that that... <laughs> That's not a done deal yet. I mean, we have to look at that. Because I, I think what we were looking for was green, green shielding. So plant material planted to give sound and visual, just a much more attractive thing. And then the eight foot fence to again, give sound barrier and and uh, just privacy. So both of those were the issues with fences that we were aiming at. I don't, maybe you and Sean talked about those existing fences, but. We did not assess them, but we they do need to be assessed. And yeah. this one's just getting drawn down because if there's repairs, yeah, if they yeah. Are. I, when I, I looked at and, it and yeah. I mean, to support the idea of the buffer was if we wanted to do an eight foot high fence along the property line, we'd have to go for a variance. We only have permit six foot high fences along the property right. line by ordinance. Right. And the borough's not exempt from its own ordinances. So the buffer is not only a buffer, but it's also a setback. So we can have the eight foot high fence, but we never sat and analyzed any of the existing conditions along the property line right now. Obviously it's something we'd have to do any project moving forward is the assessment of the property line. Yeah. Stop. Would that be a zoning? We have to go, I mean, the staff recommendation is if we want to do an eight foot high fence along the property line, we'd go to the zoning airport. Yes. If it's like residential with Brent Tag and you would be considered. I mean, like commercial, we're residential. Right. They were allowed ten foot. And that I'll, I double check it. My initial reaction was it's it's not industrial. Yeah, but your your property line 
would still be this. I'd rather caution. I'd be more conservative and say if we need a variance for a two foot higher fence, I would go for it. I'm not gonna charge myself for it, but I mean, likely I go pay. I'm not gonna charge the application for the borough, but we're gonna have to have a parents in front of the front zone area for it. Yeah. The idea of the, the natural buffer plant would really be right. And I was I also thought one of the good things about this idea from Sean is that I know you've worried and worked with and struggled with the um, light coming from Brentag ever since I've been on council. Um, you know, Bertha used to come and talk about that and and you know, a nice line of tall trees should make a big difference in your light. Well, that's Brentag's worked with us, we've called them, and they, they've improved over some things. They, they, they used to have lights directly right at you, yeah, and they turned them, yeah. But now, so, now the railroad traffic is okay. horrendous. Well, well, at least hopefully this would should help that. And um, let, let me just see. Um, who can we talk to about the trains? Okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait. Um, I can back. Did you know that? I know. Okay, we'll, we'll go to okay. Is, Was there anything else that anybody on council wanted to speak to or wanted Scott to, if, or speak yourself to? Uh, Amanda has a comment. Oh, good. She sent me. Okay. So I was going to read Amanda's comment. Great. Right. Um, uh, Amanda Pagnotta, uh, is at the Borough Citizens Police Academy with a, with a class tonight. <laughs> so that's what she is listening in, but she has not been able to speak because she is in class. So she just texted me her thoughts. So I'm going to read those. Good. Okay. So here are Council Pagnotta's, Councilman Pagnotta's thoughts. The major public concerns, such as sound buffer, site buffer, space buffer, are all addressed in concept three. In speaking to other communities about odor, there have been little to no complaints to city slash borough offices regarding dog urine when there is grass. There have been several complaints that have been made when the dog park is turf material, which we are not considering. Concept three also leaves it open for a kayak park, which allows us for down the road to apply for grant funding to have a kayak launch. I think at this time, this is a more responsible use of funds because it doesn't put taxpayers on the hook and it can be completely grant funded. Then, if the Greek church doesn't work out, we can pursue other options. I'm not an avid kayaker, I dabble, nor a dog owner. I have no personal allegiance to either, but I think the concept three is the best option to allow for opportunities in the future. I agree with the woman about appropriate signing. That was Karen. Karen, agrees with Karen about appropriate signing near and at the park. We can also include a reminder on the sign for people not to block driveways. For what it is worth, as of February 12th, when we were only considering a dog park with no opportunity for kayak expansion, we had various digital methods reach an audience online of 6,811 people. This includes people of Oakmont, but also people whose geolocation puts them in Oakmont, and they came across our post. So they may be visiting for work or recreation. 366 people, took the time to positively interact with their comments and interaction. Eight made more neutral comments or posts, and 14 were negative. There appears to be a wide variety of public support for the dog park. That is not a comment or inference that there is not support for a kayak park. It is just a nod that there is a want for both in the community and they both can be done and supported. But when I ran, I promised fiscal responsibility and the kayak park at this time is not fiscally responsible as originally planned. Let's take the time to apply for grants and funding to have an appropriate space, which may or not may not be here at the Greek church or another location. The end. Thanks, Amanda. I'd yes. like to make a comment. <clears throat> the concern, most of the people here, most of the people here represent neighbors who are immediately adjacent to the property. They're the ones whose property values, whose quality of life are immediately impacted by this project. The opinions, not that I don't respect the opinions of everyone in Oakland, but it is not right for people who are distant from this property, nor people who are not residents of the borough, to uh, force 
a project on the immediate neighbors who are who are impacted when they, those who are not immediate neighbors, merely obtain something they want or will enjoy. At the beginning of a man's comment, he said, please. The beginning of a man's Let comment, said, finish, that the please. public concerns that Let the site of the sound and sound buffer have been addressed. Let me so finish, I'm letting you know that I've already to the public concerns. Jenny, you're going to have to wait. Let me finish, please. But I am not finished. I want to make my right, statement finish. without interruption. You can't yell at people, John. Just in a fight for it. All right, wait. Enough. Enough of this. We're going to pause here. We, we can come back and you can finish your comment in a minute once you, you just hang on a minute. Um, well, I would just like to add this one, that air, where you all, that area is a very unique zoned area, you know, you know, you've got industrial, you've got residential, commercial, a Mr. Um, Briney some years ago did some changes to help, um, but what it's what we have and that's what we have to deal with so that's it's it's very unique how it's all different parts can go down it's how you end up with rent tag it's how you got speedway it's how you got the karate and then you got your nice homes there some somehow we and, and the friends of the riverfront jamie i just want to tell you i remember five years ago they stood here and then they left us they left us hanging on that riverfront i want you to know that they went down to lawrenceville and they worked on that riverfront. They did approach us, and they did want things from us. But uh, uh, the Parks and Recreation, and they left us because riverfront property is very valuable. Just so happens that piece has that big steep hill going down to it. You know, it's not a big hill. Uh, I walked. It. It's a big hill. Oh yes, <laughs> uh, you it's it's fix it, to fix that hill. That takes money to fix that hill. Like oh yeah, they're deep okay. All right, John, you can finish your comments. And then you can yes. reply, and then that, that will be it. But just, but okay. we don't have to go back, back to my call. People who are immediately adjacent to this facility have a unique, and I believe a unique priority should be assigned to their concerns. They are the ones whose property values are impacted, they're the ones whose quality of life is impacted. While I respect the opinions and desires of everyone in Oakland, they are not immediately, they are not impacted. They obtain something that is nice, convenient, a dog park, okay, an amenity, which may be good, may, may even be good for the overall world, but they are not the ones who are immediately impacted. And I think. The council should assign priority in its considerations to those who suffer the immediate impact of the project. Here. Thank you. Okay. Jane, uh, like I, John was clearly looking to argue, but my point was simply that Amanda's comment does not disagree with that, John. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. Um, I think that that may end our meeting. Um, I we're, we've listened to you and are really trying to hear your concerns. And I think what has been talked about before is there is enough, no other location that can accommodate a dog park. And I know that was Melanie's hope that we could find another place, but- No, I'm just curious of one. That, like the Amico station, yeah, down at the no. Edgewire, yeah, down on we, Pump there Street. Isn't any other public land that's borrowed. Um, we don't own the we don't own the Amico station and all of, of the Edgewater properties are held by the other people except for the park area. Well even the park area. The leaf pile, the old leaf pile area by the common. That's hard to get to. Yeah, yes. That was the first well, down, right. that was first have you have you looked down there? I'm down there. there. I'm down there three times a week. Yeah, how do you I mean, I make calm now. There's people yeah. walking dogs there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And they already are walking dogs. Yeah, let open one comments on yeah. And that's I mean, not fenced or or the, 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 the
the yeah. conference homeowners strongly object to any such thing for the reasons safety, increased traffic, there's absolutely no public parking except on street there. The people who access the park using that entrance by the leaf pile are already committing camp, uh, criminal trespass on commons property and homeowners property. So that is not a location. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so, and, and we are still looking and talking about the continuation at some future date to make this a kayak park, but also looking, I personally want us to continue to look at other places in the borough to maybe improve the California Avenue access to the river and possibly either with a, an arrangement with the Greek church or going to the opposite side, going to the down river side, creating a launch area there that possibly could be used for um, kayaks. That's my own personal um, location. I would like to see at least explored. Um, but we aren't we are done. We're going to, as a group, the council probably will be voting on this either this month or next month. I think this will probably be a little more of a discussion. We'll probably take it one more month into work session and have everybody give it a, give their opinions on council, and then the vote will probably be in May. I guess I should just say the vote will be in May. Probably, yeah, yeah um, just to give people a little time. If there are other things you want to tell us, send Scott an email or a letter, and he'll bring it to all of us. And we'll also think about that and try to try to do the best we can to make this workable for both the community with the dogs and for the neighbors. And you're not being ignored. We're trying very hard. To hear your concerns. Like well, I said, I appreciate the meeting tonight. Okay, you're welcome. Good. Okay. And you'll let us know about the truth. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a look at that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, are you saying something? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I will second, second that motion. <laughs> okay. All right, so we've got a motion and second, and the meeting is now. Thank you all for coming. And Thank you.